what is the best way to use scientific research in connection with permaculture? Because the connection and diversity in because of the connection and diversity in permaculture, it seems many things are hard to replicate in a scientific study. Um, that's true because it's not a boxed up experiment. It's an open ended system. But uh, they also don't want to rely purely on anecdotal evidence. Well, more and more research is being done. And now there is a, uh, a Permaculture Research Institute International started by the international conferences based in England. I'm one of the advisors on that. And um, there has been some wonderful um, data put down. There's a, a French permaculture site in Normandy, which is probably one of the most researched sites on the planet. And they've documented everything. And um, they've actually uh, analyzed exactly the amount of energy they put into a thousand square meters and then the production they've got out of a thousand square meters and then a larger area as well and compared the two and the production per square meter in a, the smaller area is much higher. And then you have sites around the world that are reasonably well documented like Angelo Ecolade's uh, property in uh, Melbourne, which we've filmed quite a lot. And um, that has every single gram of production in a very small area, urban micro space. So you can see in that micro space that production per, per square meter goes up again. Um, and then there are other sites around the world which have classic websites. Um, happyearth.com is a website of an Australian garden conversion and all its data. And then, of course, you have the Path to Freedom in Pasadonia. Los Angeles, again a garden, but micro space proving that the smaller space is more productive per square meter than the larger area. And now there are small acreage and larger funds providing data. So if you look online, you'll find lots of information about that. And it proves we don't actually need the very large landscapes to produce the same amount of nutrition that we do globally. In fact, it's a very small area. It's four to six percent is possible we can produce the same amount of nutrition globally on four to six percent of the area, equivalent area that industrial agriculture uses. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, there's a lot of wastage, there's a lot of transport, there's a lot of inefficiency in the large area, and it's at a great distance, where if we, if we garden around our cities and have urban agriculture, perimeter urban agriculture, and forestry, and rangeland on the outside of that, the efficiency comes right up. So we'll talk about all that um, as we go through the course. So um, these are all things that you have to be able to search out and quote at this stage, but there's more data coming all the time.